Welcome back to Trucking with Velox 18. I am here at the truck. We are warming it up. It is Sunday night. We're going to do some Sunday night trucking. And uh, that's just kind of how we're going to do it this week. We're getting started early. Uh, my pickup is actually an early Monday morning pickup. Uh, but the facility that I'm picking up from, uh, I've read online reviews that say you can show up pretty early. So I'm going to go show up really early uh, because it was either show up early or make my wife get up at an unholy hour to uh, drive me over to the truck and uh, we're still just doing the one car thing since I sold my pickup and since uh, my son took our other little gas saver car to uh, Mississippi when he went to college uh, kind of puts me in a in no car situation right now so it was either let her sleep and get a good night's sleep so she can take the kids to school in the morning and do all that uh, or um, you know make her wake up uh, at like 2 in the morning so I decided I'd let her sleep and uh, with that that means I'm over here at the truck and we're gonna get started tonight it's 10 o'clock uh, and we've got a pickup uh, it's a 3 a.m. appointment so I'm gonna warm the truck up you can hear it warming up behind me and then uh, we're gonna head on over um, like I said we should be able to get loaded early so hopefully we'll go over there get get uh, get into a dock I'll tuck in get a few hours nap get loaded get down the road a little bit, go back to sleep, get a couple more hours, and then make our delivery. So that's the plan right now. Uh, we actually got a one pick, three drop. One pick, three drop. And uh, it takes us down into Alabama. Alabama. So uh, we got a good rate per mile, but Alabama's not a great freight market. So we'll talk about that in, uh, you know, to, in, in uh, later on in the video. Uh, tomorrow, once we kind of wake up and get get this day actually started, um, we will uh, we'll be looking for a load. And so I'll incorporate that into this video, but for now, we're just gonna roll the music and we're gonna get this night started, this day started at night. I don't know what I'm saying. Roll the music. All right, we are trucking. We're headed into Murfreesboro. Uh, and we're gonna make this pickup over here at uh, Lineage Logistics. It's for a customer that we delivered to on Friday uh, that's right next door to Lineage. Uh, but the this pickup, I guess, isn't, it, it's uh, you know something that they put into cold storage a while back and now they're shipping it out from Lineage. Uh, so it's not, uh, I'm not picking up from the customer or the shipper themselves, I'm picking up from Lineage, so. Um, yeah, kind of, uh, kind of the reason why I figured I'd go over there early because lineage is, uh, at least that lineage is a little bit open to people showing up early. I read a lot of reviews where they said I could show up early, so we'll go, we'll go check it out and we'll see what happens over there. All right, pulling up over here to Lineage Logistics. Uh, well, I... I pulled in a little while ago, and uh, it took them a while, man, to check in one truck. So I don't know what was going on with that truck, why it was, why it took them so long. But I'm here really early, so I'm hoping that they'll get me in here. Bing bada boom, I got myself a door. Got myself a door, folks. Heck yeah. All right, let's get into this door and hopefully get loaded up. Lights, camera, action. All right, uh, we got it backed into a dock. This is a place where you keep your doors closed and then they open it from the inside. They'll close it from the inside and they'll seal it. Um, and then once my light turns green, I'll go in and get my paperwork. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crawl back in the sleeper. I'm gonna lay down and get some rest. Uh, once they start rocking and rolling the trailer, I'll know that that's kind of my wake up call. I'll probably set an alarm for about half hour after that. I'll check and see if my light's green. I'll go in and get my paperwork and then we'll get on our way. But uh, my appointment isn't until 3 a.m. It's only like 11.30. Well, it took so long for me to check in. I think it's like 11.45 now. So anyway, that's what we're gonna do. Um, still representing my bangles, even though they got their 
butts whooped today. Actually, they didn't get their butts whooped in totality. Uh, but the offense couldn't do anything against that Steeler defense. And uh, just like I predicted, I kind of thought, I kind of felt like the Bengals were a little overconfident. And I kind of felt like the Steelers defense, uh, I mean, when you got Hall of Famers like TJ Watt, Cam Hayward on your defensive line, uh, Minka Fitzpatrick roaming around on the backside. Yeah, you, you know, you're... <laughs> You're gonna, you're gonna be a good defense, and um, yeah, good, good defense um, with with great players. All it takes is one opportunity for those guys. I mean, T.J. Watt had a couple sacks. Alex Highsmith had a couple sacks, which is a young guy that they uh, have been trying to develop as a as a pass rusher. And then of course, Mika Fitzpatrick opened the game with a stinging pick six interception. So uh, yeah, the, the the Steelers defense uh, put it to them. And um, so that's kind of that's kind of what I was worried about. If you guys watched my my video last week, I just kind of was like, yeah, everyone's saying the Bengals should win this game, but division game against the Steelers, uh, kind of their arch nemesis. Uh, the Steelers always seem to get the best of them, and uh, not only that, but they uh, you know they they still got they don't their offense. The Steelers' offense isn't that good. They're they're not that good, but you don't need that good of an offense when your defense plays the way that that Steelers defense played today. So, uh, DJ Watt ended up getting injured, so hopefully he can get back. You never want to see even your opponents. Uh, you know, you still want to see one of the best players in the NFL go out with an injury. So hopefully he can get back, get back soon. But uh, anyway, that's my football spiel. I won't talk any more football, but uh, I just wanted. To, I don't know if you guys saw that in the intro. All right. Uh, let's uh, yeah, let's see how long this takes, and um, and then uh, we'll start heading down towards Alabama. All right, we are loaded up. It is 4:30 in the morning. We got a good nap in before they started rocking and rolling the trailer. But uh, now we got our paperwork. We got our extra seals uh, for our second and third stops, and. Uh, we got our first stop two and a half hours, maybe three hours away, and it's an 8 a.m. appointment. So, pretty much right on time. Let's get rolling. All right, let's hit the road. Let's get down to Gadsden, uh, Gadsden, Alabama. Sorry, I just woke up. That was a good nap though, man. That was a good chunk of sleep. I needed that. Um, so now we'll, uh, We'll get on with our day, and we've got a got an 8 a.m. appointment down there, and then we've got a um, a noon appointment down in um, oh I forget Alistair. Does that sound right, guys? Alistair. Um, I think you know I'm gonna go to the Loves. The Loves is on the way. I was gonna go back over in, to the Pilot, but that Pilot's always crowded, man. It's so crowded. And this Loves is kind of crowded too, but I feel like there's more opportunity for me to find a parking spot over here at this Loves just so I can run in and use the restroom and then uh, maybe get myself uh, something to drink, start my day off right with some caffeine, you know? Uh, but uh, yeah, so we're gonna head, we're gonna head south. Uh, we're actually going to go 24 all the way down uh, to Interstate 59. So just before the Georgia line, we cut uh, west, kind of southwest, and uh, we'll drop down into Alabama that way and uh, head down to Gadsden. So that's the plan. I'll catch up with you guys down the road. currently about 7.20. We've 
we've got an hour and 10 minutes to drive, uh, and yet our ETA is 7.30. Yep. We, uh, we crossed into Georgia just for this little, little bit, little, you know, a little while. So Tennessee was central time, Georgia, we're into Eastern time. And then we're going to get down into uh, Alabama and we'll go back to central time. But if you looked at the clock right now and you said, hey, I'm about an hour away and it's 720 or whatever it is, uh, looks like I'm going to be late. But nope, we're zigzagging through time zones. So I'm, I'm finding that that is, uh, it's kind of my amusement every, uh, every week because Tennessee and uh, Kentucky have the uh, central and eastern time zones that split the states in half. So it's always interesting. You're like, which county am I in uh, to determine, you know, what what the time is, uh, what time zone you're in, because it's kind of silly like that. But uh, yeah, so I was sitting here and I'm like, hey man, I got an hour and 10 minutes left to go, but it's already 7.15. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. We crossed into Georgia, eastern time. We're in Eastern time, and then we'll uh, cross back into Central time, and we'll be half an hour early to our point. So that's still the plan, and uh, catch up with you guys probably just when we get over there. It should be a quick receiver. From all the reviews, it seems like it's going to be a quick one. So uh, good news. Good news on Monday morning. Let's get this thing, let's get this week started right. You know, started better than last week, that's for sure. Made it over here, but they're tearing up their entire uh, area here to repave it. So uh, looks like all their docks are full over here. They've only got three of them, so we'll go and figure it out. All right, so they asked me to um, come out here uh, onto the street to wait instead of being up in front of that shop over there. Um, so here, I'll just show you real quick. So that's where I was at on that new concrete pad. And I just went up and asked them, I said, hey, because uh, they had pointed for me to go that way, but then I kind of asked them, like, hey, they, you told me it's going to be a little bit. Do you want me to, to you know, get out of your guys' way over here? And and uh, the guy, the, the shop boss, the shop foreman was like, yeah, maybe go put yourself out on the street. So I'm out here on the street. Uh, there's normally lots of um, parking right here. Uh, you can tell that normally there's like a turnaround area and everything right there but that's all the construction workers that are working at the job site here so uh, they got all their vehicles parked there so you know just uh, business they still got to run their business even while they're uh, doing the construction and hopefully they fix that giant hole in the driveway because that that thing I don't know, let me see. I can't zoom in in this mode, but you can't see it. I'll have to show you guys a little bit later. That hole is ridiculous. It looks like it's about a foot and a half deep. And it's about, I don't know, about four feet wide, five feet wide. It's almost big enough to swallow a Volkswagen bug. Yeah. But uh, anyway, all right. Uh, I'm gonna, um, well, I'm gonna look for load. I'll show you guys what's going on on the load board and uh, We'll wait for these guys to kind of get out of the docks and I think that'll give us a better idea of how long we're going to be here, how long it takes these guys to get out of the docks. So I'm realizing now that these guys are going to angle out of here. I'm going to need to back up more if one of these trucks leaves. So I might as well just back up now. There's nothing keeping me from, there was like a, a drain in the ground I want to try to avoid. Yeah. Let me see how close I am to it. Hold on. I'll, uh, I'm going to go do this. You guys see, um, I'll, I'll come back in and we'll look at the load board together right after this. All right, so this is what the load board's looking like right now. In fact, I'll refresh it. Let's see, it was at 42 loads. All right, so uh, we got some Florida, some New Jersey, New Jersey, Florida, Florida, Florida. So this, um, it says Tampa, right? And then it says 500 miles pretty much. And then I'd have to deadhead uh, right there, 138 miles to Silicaga. I Silicaga? That's weird. 
uh, Circle Logistics in Fort Wayne, Indiana, and they're offering 3600 Now, I know from calling on other Circle Logistics loads, uh, oh yeah, and it says, because um, I saw this one already, this one was there over the weekend, so it says negative 20, which means it's ice cream, almost guaranteed every negative 20 load I've ever seen is ice cream, um, and then it's probably multi-stop just based on my experience with circle logistics seems like they do a lot of multi-stop stuff so uh doesn't pay that good um kind of a lot of deadhead uh i mean it pays it looks like it pays good but it's got a lot of deadhead and it all depends on where those other drops are um so maybe i'll call on that one but i'll be honest that thing's been on the load board all weekend long and look at here's one that's straight okay so look at this is the same exact thing right uh, Silicaga, Alabama to Tampa, Florida. It's the same beginning and ending, right? So this one's actually 500 miles and they're offering 1600. So to get down into Tampa Bay, I mean, how far would I have to deadhead out of Tampa Bay to get back to civilization to try and find a, uh, find a load? So, I mean, you're getting $3 a mile, uh, before deadhead, you know, just loaded miles, you're getting $3 a load a mile, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to be tough to get out of here. I'm going to look to see if I can short hop somewhere else that might allow me a little bit of a better um, freight market to get out of. So I'll just be looking at some of these little loads, little runs. None of these have offers on them, so you'd have to call these brokers to find out how much they're willing to do on these. But um, State College, New York, Massachusetts. And I don't even know who um and a, and a lot of these well these are van loads so they're gonna be less anyway and texas has just been bad lately really bad bad going in bad coming out it's all it's all bad so if this was a reefer load maybe they'd be offering a little bit more than two dollars a mile and maybe i might be interested in it but i know on a van load they're gonna be kind of stuck on that number so Anyway, I'm going to keep on refreshing this and just uh, trying to find myself a load. And then um, there's 43, so somewhere there's a new one. Let's see. I'm, I was sorted by offer, so. Okay, Echo Global. That's a new one. Enterprise. It's a van load. It's a partial load. Yeah. They're going to want to give you like $200 for that partial. <laughs> Uh, all right. Um, yeah, we'll just keep on refreshing this and uh, see what we can find, man. Got to try and find something to book for tomorrow to get us out of Alabama and get us over into a better market. All right, we got in the dock uh, for about, I don't know, half hour. They took our two pallets off, charged us 50 bucks for a lumber fee, and now we're out. Look at this hole. This is what I gotta pull out of. There's no way to get around it. All right, we uh, are over uh, here in uh, Oxford, Alabama. Not Oxford, Mississippi, otherwise uh, I'd be calling Miles and trying to figure out a way to have lunch with him. So we're in Oxford, Alabama. And uh, we're going to Nordic Cold Storage, which uh, should just be a half mile up this road. And uh, this is where most of the load is coming off, uh, 20 pallets. And then I believe the, the last stop is uh, 11, yeah, 11 pallets. So. We're uh, we're not uh, some of them are double stacked. Some of these pallets, some of them are little short short pallets and stuff. So maybe even triple stacked on some of them. Let's see. another quarter mile. I hate it when they put cold storages and and warehouses in neighborhoods like this. I mean, maybe I was supposed to come from the other direction. I just, I've never been here, so I didn't know that. But, I mean, it just seems like 
kind of a silly road to bring uh, bring big trucks down. Trucks entering road. Yeah, this is where uh, this is where we're supposed to be right here. Why does it say UNFI? Is this it? 670 Airport Road? I believe that's it. I, I was not prepared for a uh, for a UNFI facility. Uh, UNFIs typically take for and for. Uh, this does look a little a little different than a typical one, so I don't know. Maybe. Welcome to UNFI Nordic. All right. I don't really know uh, where I should go, so I'm just gonna pull off to the side over here and run up there to shipping and receiving, and we'll check in. All right, uh, they had me um, just back up against this fence right here, and they said they'll call me when they got a door for me, so we'll see how long this takes, hopefully not too long. But this is my last uh, delivery for the day. My next delivery is tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. down in uh, New Brockton, Alabama. So that's where I'm looking to try and find the load out of. Um, I'm gonna refresh this right now see what the total number of loads are oh all right well we'll do that in a little bit because my hotspot act acting up so uh, it doesn't have internet but uh, there was like uh, 45 loads or something like that last time I looked so we'll see what we have and see uh, there's not a lot of loads and some of those are even double loads and stuff so um, the rates are bad so I just got to find the right load at the right moment for the right broker to get me in the right market we gotta get a little lucky so hopefully we can get lucky but until then uh i'm just gonna be hanging out here in, in the sleeper i might take a nap because i didn't sleep too much last night you know, I, I got that like uh three and a half four hours at the at the shipper and that was it so um yeah it'd be nice to maybe get a little nap in um but i'm gonna plan out kind of where i'm gonna go after this I'd like to get unloaded, you know, before like my my time runs out, and then be able to uh, be able to go and uh, and get down the road to where my delivery tomorrow morning is before I shut it down today. So hopefully I can do that. We'll see how long this takes. Um, otherwise, we might just be parking up here somewhere around here, and then driving, you know, waking up really early and driving down uh, the rest of the way down to our. Uh, next delivery but we'll worry about that after we get out of here we'll, we'll, once we find out how long it takes so uh, i'll catch up with you guys in a little bit and uh let you guys know whenever i get a door all right we are uh we're getting the door it's 12 o'clock right at my appointment time so i got here about an hour and a half early and so uh these guys are getting uh, getting people in and out of doors pretty quick there's only like three or four doors to work with so I think they're just kind of they don't have the luxury of leaving guys sitting in doors for a long time so uh, I, uh, I don't know I got, got a pretty good feeling about this I got a good good a good feeling all right we uh, we are getting out of here man that took a little while it is uh 245 so took a little bit took a little bit but uh, we are now on our way uh, we only have three hours left uh, uh on our clock before we have to uh stop so we were able to get a longer day in because we're doing a sleeper birth split so it paused our 14 hours so we're we're able to drive a little bit further so I'm gonna I'm gonna get going and start driving uh, start driving up um, or down further into um, Alabama we got to go down to New Brockton it's like I think it's 180 miles is what it said something like that 
It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be about three and a half hours, and we only got three hours to drive, so I'm not gonna be able to make it where I wanted to make it to tonight. But we'll we'll get a good chunk of it done because I don't want to wake up super 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 early in the morning. Uh, I have a 6 a.m. appointment down there, so uh, so uh, yeah, I I prefer. Uh, to be as close as possible so I don't have to wake up at like, you know, in la noche. I wanna wake up in la mañana. So, uh, yeah, we'll try and get as close as we can. I will uh, catch up the guys down the road. Let's go. could I found a truck stop uh, about an hour away from our delivery in the morning and uh, we had about I don't know 20 30 minutes left of drive time so so close to being able to make it but uh, not not enough time to be able to do it so I'm gonna jump in the sleeper and finish my sleeper berth split since I took five hours off four hours off or whatever it was earlier at the shipper now I just need to uh, now I just need to uh, jump in the sleeper and take a nap and uh, I'll just wake up you know and be out of here before uh, before 5 a.m. Uh, probably around 4 30 I'll be taking off and just get down the road a little bit and uh, we'll make our delivery but uh, we we're just outside Montgomery Alabama so just outside the capital of uh, Alabama so uh, kind of cool never been down here before this is uh, Different, different, uh, different route. That's for sure. I was on a lot of two-lane highway and stuff like that. So, uh, pretty cool. Pretty cool. I like it. You guys like? You guys know I like new roads. And so, uh, yeah, it was a good one. It was a good little trip today. And uh, we got done with two deliveries. Got one more in the morning. We weren't able to find another load, but uh, we'll just have to hit that again tomorrow. So that'll be more of what tomorrow's video is about. Is trying to find loads and. Hopefully we can find one that gets us out of here at a decent rate. That's the main goal. Kind of don't really care where it goes. I mean, I do, because I'd like to be able to loop back around to the house from wherever this one goes, but you know, it just kind of depends. Uh, it's, all, it's all up in the air right now. So I uh, gotta, gotta make a living. So I'm gonna follow the rates and follow the, the money. And that's what brought me down here for almost $6 a mile. Um, and so I have a little wiggle room on deadhead. You know, I can deadhead out of here and still be profitable. Uh, but I prefer to get a load, even if it's at a lower rate per mile, uh, to get myself in a good, good. Uh, I just don't want to take a low rate per mile load to get out of here, just to get into another bad market to get another low rate per mile out of there. So I'm trying to figure that out. Uh, there's like some 250 a mile loads going down into Florida, barely three dollars a mile to go all the way down to Miami, and I'm like, mm, no thanks. 
no thank you um yeah so anyway so that'll be what tomorrow's video is all about today this is it we're done um trying to think if there's anything else i would want to tell you guys i don't think there is this is uh this is the end of the video man um yeah i'll just end it because i if i forgot something i'll add it in later love you guys peace out see you on the next load Still don't have anything. I just figured I left the door open. I left the door open for a little outro. That I should put something in the air. Still don't got nothing. I was looking for a load right now. I missed out on a load from Coyote. I guess I could tell you that part. It was on the Coyote app. They were gonna pay to go from um, Atlanta, so I was gonna have to deadhead 200 miles to Atlanta, and then they were gonna pay 270 mile to go up to Pennsylvania. And I was trying to get them up to $3 a mile or a little over $3 a mile so it could absorb some of the deadhead I have. And um, as I was waiting for them to respond to my bid, the load disappeared, which means someone else booked it. So just missed. But uh, hey, there was, that was a worthwhile little, you know, outro, a little, little, uh, little news flash. Doot, 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 doot. News flash. Still don't have a load. <laughs> All right. I got to go to sleep. Good night. Good night now.